Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm working on the uh, P48 project, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100, and it's been a really trying day already, so bear with me if I'm a little uh, hectic. Uh, I lost all the video that I shot yesterday uh, of the steering shaft setup and installation. Um, I have a little bit of it that I'm going to clip in here in this video and try and cover, uh, try to cover all the things that I discussed in the video yesterday. So uh, I'm sorry for that. Hopefully I'll get everything covered as uh, if I can remember what it was I discussed yesterday. Uh, so I've got all of the components now to do the uh, steering shaft from our rack and pinion to our steering column and the bearings for the steering column shaft that's going to fit inside the steering column. Uh, I needed to order new bearings because the original steering column that we're going to use uh, connected to our steering box on the frame. The 48 Chevy here has a big monstrous steering box that attaches to the frame rail and we weren't going to use that with this independent front suspension uh, Helix Mustang 2 IFS that we installed. Uh, we've got a power rack and pinion here uh, mounted into our new cross member and we've just got to connect up the two parts, the steering wheel to the rack and pinion. Simple, right? So I have the uh, original steering column shaft here that the steering wheel is splined on and uh, it normally has one bearing at the top of the steering column tube that the shaft rides inside of and that bearing is pretty well thrashed in our 48 Chevy here. Uh, it has a lot of play in it uh, it's probably never been lubed in its lifetime and uh, it needs to be replaced so I've got to knock that bearing out of the top of the steering column and install our new uh, nice precision roller bearing uh, that we're going to use in place of that. And I have an identical one of these that's going to go at the bottom of the steering column and support our steering column shaft so we'll be able to spin it at very high RPMs if we choose to. But uh, that's probably not going to be the case with the steering wheel, right? I've test fit the bearings uh, into the steering column. They fit perfectly, which is a nice surprise. And they uh, they fit perfectly onto our steering column shaft as well. So uh, what I'm going to do to secure these into the steering column, at least the bottom one, the top one has a has a cup that holds it in place uh, and a land inside the steering column so it sits into a groove there and, and is held in place by the steering wheel. The lower one, there's no provision to hold it into, into place because there wasn't any lower bearing in the steering column originally. So what I'm going to do, since I don't have a lathe and I can't uh, turn a ring groove in there in order to put a snap ring to hold the bearing into place, um, what I'm going to do alternatively to that is I'm going to drill three uh, holes into our steering column in three locations around the steering column diameter. And I'm just going to tack uh, with a small plug weld the bearing race to the steering column and that will hold it in place at the bottom of the steering column and support our shaft uh, and give us a fixed bearing at the bottom that we can then shim our universal joint and get a nice precision tight fit here. Our steering shaft that's going to connect to the rack and pinion. So these universal joints are pretty standard. Um, these joints in particular that I ordered are not Borgeson. Borgeson makes uh, the majority of OEM style universal joints and they make uh, custom universal joints like these for the steering applications. But the Borgeson joints are about three times as expensive as these. So what the steering system is going to comprise of is the bottom universal joint that is splined. It's got a 36 spline uh, by three quarter diameter uh, shaft size for our shaft that's coming out of our rack and pinion. So that's our pinion shaft that's coming out of the rack and pinion. And uh, this splines into that. It has a set screw then that locks it to the rack, uh, rack and pinion. From that joint, we're going to use double D sh uh, steering shaft. So uh, they call it double D because there's a D, a D shape on both sides of the shaft. And this is, a, this is a double D that I cut down to fit in here. So at each one of these connections, uh, we're going to have to notch the double D shaft 
to give that set screw a place to bite into. And in addition to that, these universal joints have a, have a provision for a through bolt. So we're going to also through bolt them and drill a hole through the double D shaft here and through bolt the universal joint into position so that it can't vibrate loose and fall out. Everything will be Loctited and uh, that way we'll have a good, safe, secure steering assembly. So on these uh, double D shafts I'm going to do the same thing as what's here, a relief cut, and I'll put one at each location, but I haven't finalized the size yet because I didn't have the bearings for our steering column shaft. That has to be fixed, located, and unmovable before you uh, move on to the lower section of steering shaft that's going to connect to the rack and pinion. So once we have a fixed location, I can trim these down to size and get the fit perfect between all the joints. Run this bearing up inside the steering column slightly and shim this fit so that we have a small amount of preload on the steering shaft between the steering wheel and our bottom universal joint uh, so that you have a nice tight fit and the steering wheel and the steering shaft can't bounce against the bottom of your universal joint. So you can grind your steering column shaft like I did to fit the universal joint or uh, there's alternative ways you could do this. So one alternative uh, to getting the double D on the end of your steering column shaft is uh, to cut a two inch section of this double D shaft, order some extra, uh, cut about a two inch piece, you butt them together, uh, put a good V groove on both sides if you're going to weld this, so butt it together, fully weld it, grind it down, and then sleeve it with a piece of one inch 120 wall tube. Uh, slide it over there, put a couple plug welds around there, and then weld the tube to both pieces. And that should give you a straight, uh, a straight, nice steering shaft that doesn't have any wobble in it. The way I decided to do it uh, was just to grind the flats on here, and I'm going to drill a hole through this uh, for a set screw that'll that'll through bolt uh, within the U joint and it should be nice and secure. Um, I'm also going to take every one of these set screws that hold the universal joint caps into these uh, yokes on the universal joint and Loctite those as well. So take the whole thing apart, take the time, get a tube of Loctite, Loctite every screw so that none of that stuff can vibrate and fall out and cause you problems with your steering. That's the last thing we want. So I'm going to go ahead and mock this up and uh, get it into position. Uh, the other item that I didn't cover yet is uh, our steering support rod end. Um, a lot of people call these heim joints. It's just a threaded shank rod end. It's a spherical ball. So this will be located at our bottom section of double D shaft that connects to the rack and pinion. Um, and our intermediate joint will connect here in the middle between our two two pieces of double D shaft. So we'll have one piece that goes to the rack and pinion, one piece that goes to our steering column shaft. Okay, and the spherical bearing or the rod end, uh, you want to have that located as close as possible to your middle universal joint. If you have to use three universal joints like this, you'll need uh, a rod end to support it so that the shaft can't move around in there and, uh, and cause your U-joints to bind up or your steering not to work properly. So you have to have a support, and you want to locate that as close as possible to the middle U-joint. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to put a tab on the frame, probably a three-sided tab out of some square tubing uh, with a three-quarter inch bore hole for the, uh, for the shank of our rod end that will then mount into the bracket and allow us to fine-tune everything within the steering shaft. Now one item I did want to mention here with this double D shaft is make sure you inspect it before you start cutting your links down and trimming things to fit because um, this piece of double D shaft that I got uh, in shipping must have been stepped on because um, my spherical bearing here, my rod end, uh, will only slide onto that point because there's a slight bend in the double D shaft. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but... Uh, and I could probably try and straighten that out a little bit, but I might just make it more worse than it already is. Um, it's very slight, and uh, being that this 
steering shaft isn't going to be rotating at a high rate of speed, no one's going to notice it anyway. So it's not going to cause us any performance problems. There's no cracking. It's not a severe bend. It's, it's a very slight, small bend. Uh, but it's something you want to be aware of. You know, these things are shipped long. My, my section of double D shaft was 20 inches. Um, I think they sell them all the way up to like 4 feet. If you get a large section of this double D shaft, make sure you inspect it before you go to install it. Because, uh, you know, if, if that's where I needed to have my, my spherical ball end and my rod end here, uh, I wouldn't be able to get it into that position. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead over here uh, to the 48, mock this stuff up, and uh, I'll uh, rejoin you guys here in a second. Okay guys, so now that I've got the steering shaft mocked up into position um, on our steering column, um, now I've got to start trimming things down and getting a final fitment uh, on our double D shaft. Um, so this is our steering column uh, coming through here from the clamp that I built to our first universal joint here. It's a double D joint on both ends. Uh, through our upper double D shaft and into our intermediate or middle universal joint that's going to be supported by this rod end here that I've got to mount um, and then down to our lower double D shaft which connects to our final universal joint on the rack and pinion itself. So this whole assembly of components here will be mounted uh, in this general location. Obviously we're not, uh, we're not mounted up yet but we've got plenty of clearance as you can see. Um, got a good air gap around the, the header so we don't cook this universal joint too bad. Um, and good, good angles on our joints. So you can see our lower universal joint is going to clear our motor mount just fine. And once I build a bracket here in the middle for this middle universal joint and the rod end that's going to support that lower section of steering shaft, we'll be good to go. So that's how I'm going to do the steering shaft here in the 48 project. Um, there are other considerations you want to make when you're planning out your steering, um, such as collapsible steering columns or collapsible steering shafts. Um, if you use two universal joints and you have pretty much a straight line, I think a collapsible steering shaft is a must. Um, in the P48 here we don't have the room for that. Each section of this double D shaft is too short to accommodate a slip uh, fit double D shaft or an adjustable uh, collapsible double D shaft. So we've got to go with the, with the fixed shaft. And I don't think that's going to be a problem. The original uh, steering box in the 48 didn't have any uh, accommodation for collapsing. So if there was a collision on the 48, uh, I think these universal joints <clears throat> are at such an angle that the shaft would break, bend, and come apart before there would be uh, any damage done to the driver of the vehicle. Another consideration to make when you're planning out your steering column and your steering shaft connections uh, is whether you're going to use a rag joint or not. Um, typically rag joints are used at the bottom of a steering shaft uh, where it connects to a gearbox, a steering box. Rag joints are used for vibration dampening primarily, uh, but they're also a shearing point between uh, a fixed steering box on the frame and the steering shaft in the driver compartment. In our case, the rack and pinion is rubber mounted into the frame, so we're not going to have vibrations traveling up through the rack and pinion into our uh, steering wheel, um, other than any vibrations that might be coming from the outer corners, from the, from the steering knuckles on the control arms uh, that support the wheels. So I think we should be okay with vibration dampening. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. 
so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me today guys uh, on the p48 project uh, i'm sorry about the lack of content here the last few days uh we've had a we've had a rough few days we spent uh, the whole weekend working on the 6.0 uh finally got the 6.0 out of the driveway and uh it's running great and my brother's super happy about having this truck back uh for work so uh that came out well uh it was a uh, it was a difficult project just because we replaced the entire engine harness from the ECM all the way down to the passenger side uh, lowest sensor, I think, which is a knock sensor on the block behind the air conditioning compressor. And uh, that whole project was just a bear because there's so much, so much packed into that engine compartment that the space is very limited and there's not a lot of room to get your hands to take bolts loose and, and to work around. Uh, but we were able to get it done and uh, get the get the 6.0 running great again. It started right up, purred like a kitten. Uh, previously it had a rough idle and kept throwing check engine lights for various random sensors uh, because there's so much bad wiring inside that original harness after 500,000 miles. We found a lot of bare wires, we found a lot of broken wires, broken plugs, uh, so we bought a new harness, replaced all of the all of the plugs that were damaged on the new harness that we got from the old harness and we're able to piece together one nice solid good harness, tape it all up, put some loom on there and install it into the 6.0 and everything start, came up and is working great. We also did a stainless steel Y pipe uh, for the turbo that connects um, both exhaust manifolds basically to the, to the turbo flange at the turbo. Runs great, makes good boost so we're excited to have that project done. I did get all of the fiberglass mat and cloth that I ordered for the 7.3 door panels um, that I'm going to be making. I'm also going to be making a double din uh, fit into the dash so I'm going to have to do some custom fiberglass work on the front dash section that's got to come off of there to fit the uh, fit the double din head unit and I'm going to be starting that project here in the next few days so if you love 7.3's or you love OB Ford OBS and you want to see how this fiberglass work comes out stay tuned so that's it guys, thanks for watching, uh, thanks for your patience and not having daily content here this week. Uh, I'm going to get back on schedule here and start churning out videos on the 7.3 as soon as I get the 48 uh, out of the garage. Uh, I've got the 66 Mustang coming in here in two weeks, so uh, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that. It's a 289 four-speed car, uh, and so it's uh, going to be a lot of maintenance work on that car to get, uh, to get the Mustang back on the road, uh, looking good, running good, driving good. And the uh, race between the 7.3 and the 460 is coming soon. We're, I think we're also going to throw in the 6.0. None of us want to break our trucks, but we all want to get to that finish line first. So uh, that, that video is going to be coming up, coming up shortly. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave your comments, questions, suggestions below, and I'll read them through and, and try to reply back to uh, every, every comment that I get.